You have probably heard about data lake houses. I did as well. And I was wondering what are data lake houses? What challenges are they trying to solve? And why are the existing approaches not sufficient for meeting our needs? Now, in this video, we will walk through the entire evolution of data analytics platforms and we'll see what approaches exist, what challenges each of them has. And finally, we will arrive at a point where we may conclude that data lake houses are the next logical step in exactly this evolutional chain. Okay, let's start off with a short disclaimer um, because here we are talking about data analytics platforms. Data analytics platforms have one purpose and one purpose only, which is to provide data for analytical use cases. There are two basic analytical use cases, which are BI and reporting. So that's business intelligence and reporting. And here we want to create reports which we can base business decisions upon. So in business intelligence and reporting, we want to have highly structured data so that we can write concise queries on exactly that data we are expecting so that we can provide results to an, in a um, human readable format. So we want to narrow data down so that we can drive easy conclusions from them. The second major use case for data analytics platforms is advanced analytics, which refers to um, machine learning, artificial intelligence, and all of these things. And they have a different um, data access requirement because they want to read large amounts of data. We don't want to narrow them down too much. Um, so we want to read large scale data sets. And most of the technologies we use there are already based on file formats. So they want to access files so that they can read fast a large amount of data into the algorithms and then produce results upon which we can create new use cases or also reports. Now, having that said, we have two use cases. They share some requirements and they differ in one major requirement. The difference we talked about before um, is the data access mechanism. Whereas the commonly shared requirements are both use cases want to have up to date data. They need data management capabilities for versioning and so on. And also indices or that they can query data um, fast. All right. Having that understood, we can have a look at the first generation data analytics platform architecture. And I've depicted it here. Now, as we can see at the center, we have one central component, which is the data warehouse. And the data warehouse usually is comprised of a relational database. And relational databases and data warehouses were designed for the business intelligent and reporting use cases. Because here we need highly structured data, which we can query with um, SQL usually um, to create reports. And here we have normalized schemas, layered schemas, and proprietary file formats because the relational database system usually manages their own files to provide very strict data management capabilities and also very powerful data management capabilities like ACID transactions, um, indices, versioning, and all of these things so that we can um, query data fast and also concurrently and also write concurrently. Now, these systems have one problem. They combine computation and storage. So the relational database management system manages its internal files and don't reveals them to the public for direct file access. And also the um, RDBMS, it has a built in execution engine for SQL queries. Now here happens all of the ASIN transaction stuff and all the query optimization and so on. Now we could ask, what are the challenges of this approach? Why don't everyone have a data warehouse? So the major problem is costs. As I said, da uh, data warehouses combine storage and computation, and therefore we need to scale for all the data we want to have in our data warehouse. Now with the advent of big data, like everything is producing data at a large scale today, and we need to scale our, our data warehouse for peak load for our peak data volume. So, and that's a huge problem because these systems have to become so huge that you almost cannot pay for them anymore. Secondly, the advent of unstructured data like um, videos and images and texts. So 
unstructured data, which we want to analyze as well. Now the data warehouses and their technologies were built for highly structured data and for BI and reporting use cases. So they are not well suited to analyze or to query unstructured data. That's the second challenge. And the third one is um, with our advanced analytics frameworks that we have today, like TensorFlow and Spark Machine Learning and so on, they vastly require um, direct file access, which our data warehousing technologies do not offer. Having that understood, we can ask what's the approach that existed afterwards to overcome these challenges. And this leads us to the second generation data analytics platform architecture. Now the second generation architecture looks like this. We have our input data. We still have a data warehouse for our BI and reporting use cases. And now we introduce another layer, which is the data lake, which is a very simple approach, which is simply a cloud, cloud object store. Um, you can think of just a bunch of files. Now our data is basically ETL'd or loaded into our data lake. And from there it's ETL'd, a subset of data is ETL'd in our, into our data warehouse. And with this, we get direct file access and we can store the vast amount of data in our data lake. And we still have BIM reporting use cases accessing the data warehouse, which contains only a subset of data, so we don't have to scale it that large. Usually what also happens is that we uh, ETL back um, data from the data warehouse into the data lake, such that our analytical or advanced analytics use cases can access file in the data lake directly, also data which has been stored or is stored in the data warehouse. Okay, so we end up with this architecture. Let's have a look at the challenges we faced with the data warehouse. So we wanted to overcome costs of scaling the data warehouse to very large which is given because now we can store our vast amount of input data in the data lake. Also, we can now store unstructured data directly in the data lake as files. And we have also overcome the direct file access challenge by storing files in the data lake. Also files from the data warehouse, which are exported into the data lake. Okay, if we look at this, we can ask, what challenges do we still have with the second level a second generation data analytics platform. Okay, and there, there's a bunch. Because that's the that's architecture that's implemented in most companies, I would say, at the moment. And the challenges are that we have a staleness of data in the data warehouse. Because now we have a two-tier architecture where the most up-to-date data ends up in the data lake and then it, there has to be a second set of processes um, shuffling this data into the data warehouse. So the data warehouse has stale data. Also, we introduce a lot of complexity by maintaining two systems and the data flows between them. And we have to develop these data flows, which also may contain um, errors and we have to deploy them as well and, and see that they are running. Thirdly, we don't have data management capabilities in our data lake because our data lake is simply a bunch of files and there's no component which can provide data management capabilities. As we are having two systems now in place, we also introduce a cost factor, which is not primarily from the data lake itself, but it's probably more from the ETLs which we have to develop and maintain and operate and all of these things. So we have to develop, maintain and operate two systems and all of the data flows between them. And finally, we are still locked in with our data warehouse because it, ha it has a proprietary file formats. So we cannot simply switch technologies and switch to a different um, data warehousing technology, but we're still locked in with our data warehouse. So these challenges still exist. What I forgot to mention about the uh, data management capabilities in the data lake is that our advanced analytics use cases also have the requirement to have versioning indices, um, ACID transaction, transactions for concurrent access and so on, which is not given at all by this approach. Um, so we have to manage versions and 
um, machine learning model versions and so on in our data lake all in a custom solution within our advanced an, uh, analytics workflows which is also a huge drawback of this architecture okay now a short summary so at first there were data warehouses only which were built for highly structured data and business intelligence and reporting use cases we have schema on right so we make sure all data in our data warehouse is of the same format and we utilize this format or this schema to write sql queries to produce concise results in human readable form and we face the challenge that we cannot scale these data warehouses to our big data and unstructured data requirements. The second approach, the second generation data platform architecture comprises a data warehouse and a data lake, which introduces complexity because we have two systems, which also increases costs for managing, operating and maintaining them. And also they are still not optimal for our advanced analytics use cases. Now this leads us to the next question. How could we overcome these challenges now? And I've put them here again. So we have the problem that there are no data management capabilities in a data lake. So to overcome this, we would have to add data management capabilities in a data lake. And that's the only way to overcome it. Um, so, and given data management capabilities in a data lake, we could think of getting rid of the data warehouse altogether because that, that would eliminate all of the challenges um, that we're still facing. Because by eliminating the data warehouse, we don't have two systems anymore. We don't have stale, da stale data in the data warehouse. Um, so we do reduce the costs by simply going with one system and also the proprietary file format. So the vendor login would be gone. Now the key question is, can we even design a system which builds up on top of a data lake and provides us with these strong data management capabilities which we know from data warehousing technologies and that interestingly is the exact question that is the foundation for the for the development of data lake houses now how could we add data management capabilities on top of a data lake there exist two approaches. One is the custom storage engine. And this approach has been around for quite some time. And you may know it from Apache Hive, Acid, Metastore, or Snowflake. And here the idea is that we have a data lake. And side by side, we have a metadata service, which is a highly available and strongly consistent service, which only stores metadata. Now, all the data consumers, so the producers and consumers, have to go through the meter store to access files in a data lake. So if we write data to the data lake, we have to notify the metadata service. And if we want to um, read data from the data lake, we have to ask the metadata service which files we actually should read. Now, this requires our producers and consumers to implement a set of protocols so they know how to access the metadata service, what queries to ask, and so on. And the major challenge of this approach is that we still need a, a strongly consistent and highly available service um, side by side with our data lake, which is in a sense, again, a second system. So we still have two systems in place. However, the metadata service, it doesn't store the data, but only metadata. Okay, that's the one approach. And then the second one, is the lake house approach. The lake house approach goes even one step further and asks, can we build data management capabilities directly into the data lake without requiring an additional service? And they came up with the idea that they store the metadata in the data lake and that the producers and consumers also have to implement a very strict set of protocols to access the data lake. So the complexity for data management actually goes into these protocols and the metadata goes into the data lake. This has the advantage that we have no vendor login at all anymore because in our data lake we use open file formats and we could use um, an open file format also for our metadata. 
And we also get the direct file access by only having the data lake for our advanced analytics. Now these advanced analytics um, frameworks, they already rely on file access, so they already have um, file access uh, connectors implemented. And these connectors would have to implement the um, lake house um, protocols as well. Okay, and that's the entire idea of a data lake house. We want to build a data management service within the data lake, combining metadata in open file format, which is stored in the data lake, together with protocol implemented in the file access um, technology. Okay, a short summary of the second part. Now, the second generation data analytics platform comprised a data warehouse and a data lake. And we were introducing a lot of complexity by having two systems in place. The one system was good for BI and reporting. The other system was good for direct uh, file access for our advanced analytics and storing unstructured data. The only way to over overcome the challenges of this second generation architecture, we would need to reduce um, our architecture to comprising only one system. And we would have to choose the data lake because we need direct file access and unstructured data. Now, if we only have a data lake, we lack data management capabilities, which we are used to from our data warehouse. So we, we would need to implement data management capabilities on top of a data lake. And that's exactly the approach of a data lake house. The data lake house approach uses metadata stored in the data lake in an open file format and protocols and accessing systems and eliminates the requirement for having any second system at all. At the moment, there are two very popular implementations of a lake house, which is um, Delta Lake and Iceberg. And in the next video, I will give you an introduction what the idea between Delta Lake is and how it is trying to accomplish exactly this idea that we have been talking about here. I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, if you did, please hit the subscribe button and leave some comments if you have questions. Um, if you don't, that's fine as well. Um, I hope you tune in for the next video. Until then, bye bye.